If you don't know what multi-shot is, just think of multi-shot as an evolution of one shot. So we've got a flight controller, and the flight controller needs to tell the ESC how fast the motor should be spinning. And way back when, the way that was accomplished was with traditional PWM. So we have a, an electrical pulse, and the pulse is between 1,000 and 2,000 microseconds long, and the length of the pulse determines the throttle value that you're trying to communicate. 1,000 microseconds is zero throttle, 2,000 microseconds is max throttle, and everything in between. One of the problems with that approach is that the 2,000 microsecond pulse length limits how fast you can update. If the pulse has to be up to 2,000 microseconds long, you can't send a new signal, an updated information, any faster than once every 2,000 microseconds. And in fact, you need a little bit more time than that because you need some quiet time in between each of the pulses to allow each of the communicating devices to know when the pulses are starting and ending. That quiet time, by the way, is called quiescence if you want to impress somebody with a, uh, <laughs> with a $5 word. One shot brings two improvements to the table over the traditional PWM. One of the things one shot brings to the table is that it shortens the pulse length. Instead of a 1,000 to 2,000 microsecond pulse, you have between 125 and 250 microsecond pulses. And the shorter pulses have the advantage that you can send updates more often. And this, of course, was driven by multirotors. When you're flying a fixed wing and you're controlling the throttle directly, you're not going to be updating thousands of times a second. So a 2,000 microsecond pulse length is just fine. It's more than what you really need. But with a multirotor where the flight controller is trying to adjust the motor speeds thousands of times a second potentially, or maybe as much as 8,000 times a second on some of the latest firmwares. You need a shorter pulse length to allow updates to be sent more frequently. And those shorter pulses that OneShot uses are called fast PWM. The other thing that OneShot brought to the table was a thing called sync PWM. And the idea here is that the PID loop calculates a new motor value. It, it has a new information about the, what the motor needs to be doing based on what the copter is doing in the gyros and the stick inputs. And it's going to send that information to the ESC, and the ESC is just going to be waiting for that information to come in. Rather than the, the PID loop shoving the new value out the door, and maybe the ESC gets to it now, and maybe it gets to it in a minute. That's a really, really poor explanation for what Sync PWM really is, but I'm trying not to go too far into the weeds here. Alrighty, well, as one shot is to PWM, so multi shot is to one shot. Don't let the fact that it's called multi shot make you think that there's like, oh, is there more of more shots? No, no, no. It's just what they called it. And basically, in the same way that one shot made the pulse length shorter, multi shot makes the pulse length even shorter still. The fastest that one shot can go based on its pulse length is 4 kilohertz. That's 4,000 updates per second. And in reality, because of that quiescence that you need, the actual maximum update rate for one shot is slightly less than 4 kilohertz. Whereas multi shot uses an even shorter pulse length and can go up to 32 kilohertz. And just like one shot, multi shot can run either in synced or unsynced mode. Let's talk for a minute about synced versus unsynced mode. In unsynced mode, a PWM signal is generated with a fixed frequency, and every so often the PID loop will tell the PWM generator to change the frequency of the PWM signal. But the, the PWM signal is not tied to the PID loop itself. It is always at exactly the frequency that is specified up until the moment that it changes, and then it changes to the new frequency. With synced multi-shot, or one-shot, or whatever, the output of the PID loop determines the frequency of the motor signal. So if the PID loop is operating at 8 kilohertz, then the motor output will be updated every 8 kilohertz, and that's that. Now, on its surface, that makes sense. What's the point of running the motor update signal faster than the PID loop? Because the new motor update values are calculated by the PID loop. So if the PID loop hasn't finished on a new loop, then the motor, there's nothing for the motor to do except just keep doing what it was doing. So if a given motor is at 50% and the PID loop hasn't finished running its calculation, then the motor is just going to stay at 50%. So why go to the motor and say, stay at 50%, stay at 50%, stay at 50%, stay at 50%, okay, now go to 25%. Why not just tell it 50%, okay, now 25%. So that's synced PWM. Every time the PID loop calculates a new value, it's output to the motors, and in between, you just don't say anything. Unsynced PWM gives you the option to keep telling the ESC what you want it to do, even if nothing has changed. 
The downside of synced PWM is a thing called jitter. And what that means is that the PID loop doesn't take exactly the same amount of time to run every time it runs. If you have 125 microsecond loop time, which is an 8 kilohertz PID rate, then sometimes it'll be 120 microseconds and sometimes it'll be 130. And the reason for that is that we got all these calculations going on in the loop and it just doesn't take exactly the same amount of time every single time. Okay, well now you know what multi-shot is and what synced versus unsynced motor output is. The real question that it, we have to answer is, does it make a difference? And that actually is not as easy a question to answer as you think. Some very, very smart people are putting their heads on this question and not coming to a consensus answer. Uh, RS2K and the race flight developers feel that faster motor updates definitely do make a difference. Boris has come out and said that in his opinion, there isn't a lot of benefit going above about 2 kilohertz motor updates. In fact, he, he may have said more uh, definitive things than that, but I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to mistribute him. And uh, Quad McFly has been doing some tests on his thrust stand to see if there's any difference in like motor response time and thrust response time at faster motor updates. There, there is no answer to that question yet, but I am going to take a stab at answering some of these questions in a few upcoming videos, and I hope you'll look forward to them. But for now, happy flying.